So where we're at here in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, it's a large watershed that incorporates six states, it's about 64,000 square miles. Uh, the Chesapeake Bay has been identified by the EPA as being in, too polluted with nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen, plus sediment. So within the context of the Chesapeake Bay TMDL, which TMDL stands for Total Maximum Daily Load, they set limits and you can think of it as like a pollution diet so that there's a certain amount of pollution or any sort of even trash or any other kind of pollutant like that, that there's a certain amount you could have and still meet uh, water quality standards under the Clean Water Act. So what they've said is that every jurisdiction, which they've broken it down by counties, uh, the EPA has designated authority to the states and said this is the state's limits and this is where the states are currently at. So you, they, you all need to develop a plan, which is known as the WIP, the Watershed Implementation Plan. So now he, each county is given a specific number of reductions that we need to meet for nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. Under the developed sectors, where EPA has now started to roll in the MS4 permits as the way to meet the developed sector, we're talking with the MS4 permit, that is specifically looking at acres. So what's your impervious acres and how are we going to treat or reduce the number of impervious acres within our urbanized area as laid out by the census tracts. So a street sweeping, one mile of street sweeping counts under the TMDL math in pounds of a certain thing, but over in the MS4 it counts as an impervious surface reduction equivalent we would already started to look at what we're doing and we've already started to have a, a plan, even though that plan is somewhere around, to actually meet the Chesapeake Bay TMDLs, it's well over $1.2 billion, which the county, if we provided no other services, we could not take on that much debt legally. So we have to become innovative and really try to look for the best ways to meet these reductions. That's where the street sweeper options came in and our stormwater manager was a, sort of a real advocate for it. So as we sat down and, and did the math, it, it became apparent to us that it was gonna be financially feasible and actually the bang for the buck would be more so than taking that money and putting it into a pond. So the short sweeper was about $310,000, say three twenty dollars when it was all said and done. And if we were to take $320,000 and invest that into brand new infrastructure, that wouldn't get us a whole lot of treatment and that would be a one and done pop. That would be done and over. So having a 300 some odd thousand dollar piece of machinery that we can get those reductions every year and that we are in control of the amount of reductions we get in it by way of us being able to project that machine into the community even further to gain more miles. And of course there's uh, criteria under each BMP. So like for street sweeping, to maximize your benefit, you have to hit that street 25 times a year. So we, and also we want to make sure that we're providing the water quality to our local streams by actually sweeping up the material. So we don't want to be flying by at 10 miles an hour, just we'll get you next time. We want to make sure that we're actually providing benefit to the people who live in our community by actually providing clean streets and clean streams. To be able to make sure that we got the right bang for the buck, we decided to go with a scissor lift uh, sweeper truck. That enables us to have a uh, dump truck staged in one of the 45 routes that we have uh, mapped out and then to be able to put three to four loads into the single action dump truck while he keeps going. That dump truck can then go to the landfill where the, the material goes to be dewatered or goes right onto the pile and then come back and then the street sweeper never misses a beat. By looking at the street sweeper, we were able to see right off the bat that this is the most cost efficient measure that we could find at the time. So our idea with this program is to use, use the street sweeper. We've looked at the MD analysis and the models, and it is the most, most cost-effective solution for us to use uh, to address the MD requirements. So our funding that we're using now is almost entirely local funding. Uh, we had to do that to meet the Chesapeake Bay and MDE's requirements. Uh, we are very proud in that we're meeting those according to the models, with much less funding by doing the street sweeper versus some other projects. We, we looked at a host of various projects uh, that range from additional infiltration systems, uh, fairly large projects, to street sweeping obviously, and found that bang for the buck, we're getting the most out of it with street sweeping. 
the thing that I really like about the street sweeping is on some of these other projects that we have done in the past, people always ask us, well, what are you doing? What, what's that for? Why are you spending this money? Whereas in the street sweeper, they're coming to us saying, we love the fact that we saw this, we saw clean streets, clean streams, we saw the sweeper out, really pleased with the end product. They're not asking why we're spending the money, they're telling us how much they like what they see. So it's a 180 from a different approach that we have tried before. It comes right down to it comes down to dollars. Mm -hmm. And you look at the other BMPs and some of those are quite expensive to install. We have this number of somewhere in the $20,000 range per acre of treatment that we look at that that's, that's a good thing. So anything $20,000 or less is, is what we look for. And what we've calculated is street sweeping will put us well below that $20,000 per acre of treatment. And therefore gave it very high rating at this point, or my, you know, marks that, yes, that's the way we want to do. That this is the, the fastest and quickest way we could get started on that reduction of that 20%.